Beach FM, locals talking to locals. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show Paikakariki Express himself, Christian Cullen. G'day, Christian. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, mate. Good morning. You're down in Otaki watching the kids play a bit of cricket this morning. Yep, yep. Nice and early uh, early start this morning. Eight o'clock, had them down here, so... Yep, they're not not too far away. Done. Just need another need a bet now. And we'll be uh, we'll be on our way home. Outstanding, outstanding. Well, mate, I thought I thought I'd get you on now. As you remember, I might have uh, stolen an hour of your time when I left radio school and, at your coffee shop in Paraparaumu. But um, it's also the one week out from the World Cup. So, how did you feel that tournament went, mate? Well, I thought it was. Um, I mean, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I think Japan put on a pretty good show. Um, you take you take away that the All Blacks didn't win and they had a typhoon come through. I think everything else was was pretty amazing. I mean, gee, the crowds, uh, the facilities, the grounds, the support. Um, man, some of those, some of the atmosphere in some of those games was was unreal. So Absolutely. they should be really proud. And by looking at all the numbers that have come out and the the viewership and uh, people going through the gates, it's been it's been a massive uh, success. Um, apart from obviously. Um, the All Blacks not winning it, but, but uh, I think that just shows you how hard World Cups are, are, are to win. And uh, on their day, there was sort of four or five teams um, that could win it. And, and like all World Cups, um, there was upsets. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, I thought it was really good. When are we going to learn, mate, to stop messing around with fullback World Cup year? <laughs> What do you reckon? Oh, I don't know. I think, I think probably that wasn't the, <laughs> the case in this situation. I think Malonga and Barrett. Um, I thought that was a pretty good combination, mate. Hey, look, we could have Ben Smith at fullback, and we, gee, we could have Dan Carter at ten, but I don't think we would have. You know, England were just too good on that day. I think um, we just got beaten up up front, mate. Mm-hmm. We got out muscled, and, and we just didn't have an answer. So I don't know. That's one of those games, a bit like um, in '99 when we played France. I think the 30, 40 minute period. I don't think any team in the world would have beaten that um, that French side in that, in that 30, 40 minutes. I'm so. It is what it is. Absolutely, absolutely. So we've um, we've come to an end of an era with uh, a lot of a lot of guys moving on. You have been part of all black teams that transition um, through. Uh, granted, it's a bit of a different different game now. But um, you know, what what will they be looking in the in the next all black coach? Yeah, this is a really hard one. I mean, I've, whatever we've seen the other day, I've sent it out to these twenty six buddy people that can. Um, <laughs> They can come in and they've offered um, or, or applied, so I don't know about that. But I don't know. To me personally, I like to see a bit of a change, yeah. um, a, a different voice. I know Hanson's been there for a while. Um, I guess his crew around him, and um, with them, I, I guess losing the. I think if they had won the World Cup, I think Foster would have been probably your, your man. But yeah. now, um, well, I think there needs a bit of a change. You're not going to lose that all black way because there's going to be enough players that have been around and senior players I know we're losing senior players but there's enough for the other so-called senior players that are going to be there so you're not going to lose that but I think there needs to be a new voice what that is whether that's I don't know Scott Robinson whether that's Jamie Joseph and Tony Brown whether that's I don't know Dave Rennie I thought he was going to the Wallabies but um, by all accounts he's, he might be applying for this job I, I don't know what the, the makeup's going to be but for me, it would be great if there's a, a new voice in there. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Um, Dave Rennie did, of course, give us, uh, Wellington at least, um, a, a national title, um, unlike all the silvers that have come of that. Uh, what do you remember about um, playing under Dave uh, back in that in that uh, NPC side? Yeah, well, I'll probably say he's probably one of, one of the better ones, the coaches that I've had. He's kind of a little bit like Wayne Smith, you know, he's yeah. just... I don't know, I just really enjoyed his, his way of thinking. He gets on with the players really well. Um, yeah, just a real thinker of the game. Yeah. Uh, makes you feel really comfortable and he, and he gets the best out of players. So, And obviously when he went uh, left Wellington and went up to the to the Chiefs, he's, um, he showed what he could do. I guess with a team that was struggling and with him and Wayne Smith together, they, they went on and won a couple of titles with the Chiefs. So... I mean, he's very close to a three P. Yeah, well, so he's definitely got the he's definitely got the goods. Whether or not um, those rumours are true that he, he might be coming back and applying, I don't know, I don't know. But you know, there's there's a handful of of uh, coaches that if they get put in that um, all back environment, I'm sure they go really well.
Excellent. And um, mate, I know this is probably a big, a big uh, question that's always asked of you, or, or maybe. But um, what do you? What, what were some of your favourite moments um, at the at the top of your your career back then? Well, obviously not losing. <laughs> obviously, uh, obviously like, not. <laughs> yeah, I think some of those. Um, what was it? You your know, first year in a black jersey, you had five consecutive losses. Was it? No, no. Well, that was um, that, that, that year. Was oh, lost that year. Players, so that was in '98. So we lost. Uh, I think Blunt and um, yeah. I think Brooke and uh, Sean Fitzpatrick. So five, five senior players left in that year. And, yeah. I mean, that was a definitely a tough year. Five on the bounce and obviously World Cup year. So that, those losses are funny ones because you remember those the most. I mean, yeah. I mean for me, sevens was quite a big big thing for me. So you know, Hong Kong was a massive highlight when we. Um, we won in 95 when Jonah got part of the tournament and 96 I played and got part of the tournament. They were pretty big. Um, I think 90, 98, the end of 90, 98, after those losses, went to Commonwealth Games and won a gold medal there. Um, so that was that was pretty cool. Uh, all black wise, I guess in 96, the series in South Africa yes. was, was, pretty, was pretty big. I mean, your first test match was pretty big. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like, there's there's a few, there's definitely a few. But I mean, to me, I mean, '99 massive disappointment losing to the French and and the semi final. That's always sort of sort of sticks with you. Yeah. Hey, um, uh, speaking of big, um, can we imagine just how many tries you would have scored if your jersey fit? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a joke. Mate. Back then, you know, one size fits all. But <laughs> shorts, I, I remember I used to take the jersey in sometimes. It'd, it'd be hanging out the bottom of my shorts. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what's the biggest changes you've seen in the game? I mean, it's it's huge. But what what is it that um what rugby these days is really impressing you? I mean, you're you're across it still. You're you're still involved with Sky Sports as a commentator, um, so you see a lot of it. Um, but you know, are we going in the right direction for the sport? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think you've seen probably at the back end of the World Cup. Um, you know, just talking about the, the head-eye tackles and the headshots, I think players pretty much adjusted. You know, at the start of the World Cup, we've seen some bloody dubious uh, yellow cards, red cards. <laughs> and we just... Near the back end of the tournament, you know, they, they adjusted. So, I mean, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, we want to look after players and, and the heads and, and the knocks and all that sort of thing. So I think that's, that's getting there. Um, I just like the science behind the game now, That you know, the, the training... Um, you can get a pretty good athlete now and make him a pretty good rugby player by what you can give him just just off the off the park and on the park, mate. I mean, you're always going to get guys. Um, well, not always. Say always. You, you're going to get guys that come through like Boat and Barrett that have all the the X factor, and then you can you can give them all the ingredients to become even better. So I kind of I like that as well. But yeah, I just like the science. You go watch them train or. Well, pre-season and some of the stuff they do now is, is pretty cool but it's you know it's all mental diet mm. and, you know it's all individually um, tailored to the individual which I think when we were coming through you pretty much flew, uh, threw a blanket over a prop forward and a fullback and you're pretty similar training method so now it's just completely different as well I think it's great I did um, ask you once if you could change anything uh, in your career. You did say sports science. Uh, if you'd under- what you understood now, um, back then, still the same? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and I say preventing injuries, looking after injuries, your diet, your just everything, mate. I mean, obviously back then, you, you know, you like to have a beer after a game, <laughs> and maybe a few too many once in a while. But um, yeah, obviously. Um, as time goes on, you learn more, and um, the nutritionist and trainers obviously learn more and, and know more about the game and how to get the best out of players. So that's that is a no-brainer. But I mean, we had a pretty good time when we were coming through. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what you know now, you put you may have been able to last longer. You could have looked after injuries, not played on injuries. Yeah. So there's a handful of things, mate. But as I said before, it, it is what it is. When we played, and you just deal with it. And, and now, yeah. Um, players can um, look after their bodies a bit better and, and know how to look after them, which is uh, which is good for the game. Absolutely. And how, how's your body these days, mate? Oh, I can get by, man. <laughs> I can get by. I've got, you know, a little bit of arthritis in the knee and no cartilage in the knee and a little bit of no cartilage in the ankle and tight shoulders, but I can still get by and play with the kids and 
Still, it's still, and, uh, and play golf. Yeah, sorry, but yeah, that but, was my next question. Yeah, as I said, mate, it's um, you know things might have been different if uh, we had had the stuff when we were coming through and you looked after the knee a bit better. But I know probably in a little bit of ten years or whatever, I'm going to need something done to my knee. So, <laughs> um, yeah, when there's no cartilage on, it's bone on bone. You you tend to struggle a bit, but yeah, you just got to deal with it. Well, you gave us some awesome years, so thank you for that. Um, Colleen, last question, mate. Um, with the, the new age, I, I, I watch a lot of sport over overseas, and um, uh, you know, with uh, them going to Spark with this app, do you think that is uh, possibly the road that we are going down? Um, lessons learnt from this World Cup that maybe possibly, um, I don't know, Sky may have a better app, but is that, is that the way we're going, where we can watch our sport? Yeah, I'm not really tech savvy, to be fair, mate. I mean, I, I booked the Spark thing and I had a few buffering issues. And, um, you'd be watching a game and you wouldn't want to bloody pause it or rewind it to, to have a replay of something just in case you couldn't get it back. Absolutely. So, I guess so. I mean, I mean, it's the, the new age, isn't it? A lot of people are streaming on their phones or iPads and around the world. So, yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things where the, the people that, that know, whether you're in Sky or Spark, that... They would have learned a lot over the World Cup and, and how to how to get it right. So, um, I mean, in the end, the, the, the product was... and that They got it by the end of it, I think. It was, it was pretty good and sort of that. But whether it's free to air, mate, or whether you pay for it, I'm, I'm not too sure, man. But all I know, man, it's probably... They're they also a pretty good product, and they've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what happens uh, whenever those contracts come up again. Yeah. We will indeed. Well, Christian Cullen, the man, the myth, the legend, the Pukakareke Express, thank you so much time, uh, for your time this morning. Enjoy the lilies down in o- Otaki and, uh, yeah, uh, uh, the rest of your day and weekend, my man. All right, mate. Thanks for that. Christian Cullen, one of the best. 106.3 BGFM.